Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Brett Tippy Podcast. I'm Brett Tippy, and I'm here with Tiana Smith, Stevie Smith's mom, here at the Stevie Smith Memorial at Mount Washington on Vancouver Island. And we just had a great day of racing, a week, great weekend of racing. And um, we're doing a podcast here with Stevie Smith's mom, Tiana. How are you, Tiana? I'm really good. Thanks for having me. You betcha. Nice to see you. Great to hang out with you all weekend. And uh, yeah, it's... Uh, it was a downhill race. It was the first time it was like sunny and dry and dusty here. It's always raining or snowing or sleeting. Snotty out there. Yeah. yeah usually uh, Vancouver Island weather. It's usually later in the year, but we had some good weather and we had a good time. And uh, yeah, we thought we would talk about, about Stevie Smith. And uh, I know you're a brave lady. Um, I know that, uh, you know, it's been, been, been hard to, to, to lose your son in his prime um, but you're brave and you're moving on with your life and you're keeping his legacy alive and you're yeah. helping the young riders in Canada and inspiring many other riders with all the things that you do. And um, it's very commendable. And we've become friends over the years with, at all these races. <laughs> yeah. and I was a friend with Stevie and uh, have interviewed him for many, many years. And um, I think I think this is pretty cool to, to tell his story and to tell some stories from your perspective as the mom. Everyone knows the famous scene <laughs> in the Collector movie in Seasons where you shuttled him yep. up and down and then he got so fast from doing so many shuttles with you that he went on to, you know, become, you know, World Cup overall champion. But uh, let's go back, back in time and talk about Stevie uh, from the beginning. So, okay. um, born and bred in Vancouver Island. Yep. Born... Uh, in Nanaimo, raised in Cassidy. Okay. In Cassidy. How big is Cassidy? Um, really small. One of those towns where you have the one stoplight, the one bar. So it's, I don't know how many people, but it's pretty small. Small town. Yeah. All right. Like how many uh, stoplights is there, say, for instance? Uh, one by the airport. Yeah, just okay. the one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Um, what was Steve like as a baby boy? He was damn cute. Uh, he had a cute little mullet with ringlets. <laughs> really? Yeah. Natural mullet? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, Mom, I, he asked me, why did you give me a mullet? I said, because it was cool then. Yeah. Because that was the 80s, 90s, early 90s. Um, yeah, he was just a little cute little dude. I was told once he should have been, I should have had him modeling as a baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh. um, what about his first bike? Like, did... I think you told me he started riding at two years old. Yes. Uh, yeah, two. Um, and a pedal bike. We didn't have the run bikes like we have now. And I bought him this little tiny bike. And I, yeah, next thing I know, he we're at my friend's. Her son was learning to ride a bike. And I look out, and there's Steve at two years old riding. Wow. On his, with no training wheels, just zipping. I went, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, started really young. Oh, wow. It was natural born into him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then you had him BMX racing at a young age too. That, that was his first uh, yeah. passion. Yeah, he started about his. Again, I'm not bad with or I'm bad with exact dates and stuff. But he was six or seven when he started. First, when we took him there, he wasn't interested. And then he he went and finally tried it, and yeah, fell in love with it. Wow, that's cool. Was he was he, you know dominating from an early age or, or did he it doesn't it didn't take him long um they bumped him up to expert really quick yeah um he didn't go through all of the stages or the time mount races you're supposed to they bumped him up because he was so fast yeah and yeah it's just yeah how old was he when he started mountain biking then if he was bmx 12 for 12 years 12. old on the mountain bike he got bored with bmxing so that's why we moved there what he did one day I had to explain to him after, um, he blew his gate so he could pass everybody because he wanted competition and there was none. And so I had to explain to him that blowing his gates was kind of like cheating and to think how the other kids would feel if they knew he did that so they, he could pass them. Yeah. And he kind of went, oh. And so that's when he stopped having that competition, there wasn't enough that why he wanted to go mountain biking. Yeah. Because then he could compare himself to everybody. Yeah. Right, so oh, interesting. Mm-hmm. And how long was he mountain biking before he started racing? Like twelve? Uh, no, that was right away. Right away. Yeah, first, like <laughs> he mountain bike before, like for fun. But then, yeah, right away we went to uh, Hammerfest, and he raced there. 
Wow. And he was 12, and there was no category for him. He had to race the 17 and unders. They didn't want to let him race because he was too little. And I just said, just let me sign whatever I need to sign. Let the kid race. And so they did. Oh, wow. And, yeah. And was he rocking and rolling and, and winning right away on the mountain bike? Uh, not right away. Uh, I mean, he was 12. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone else was 17 and older. Oh, there, I see, I see. Oh. There was no kids then. Oh, okay. He was, yeah, it was an adult sport. So even having a bike that fit him was hard. Yeah. And so I just remember walking around going, eyes wide, deers, you know, like in headlights kind of thing. And all I could hear is, look at that little kid. What was he riding? What kind of bike was it? Anyhow, they're going, look at that kid on that bike. He's just dropping off everything. <laughs> and then I realized, oh, they're talking about Steve. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, so it started right away. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's cool. So you did the Hammer Fest, and then, you know, I guess you moved to uh, Vancouver Island Cup. Yeah. And, uh, you know, traveling around a little bit, and then eventually you started doing BC Cup. BC Cups. And, and then Canada Cups. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he just loved racing. Yes. Yeah, um, he never tired of it. Even BMXing, we BMXed every day. There was a track to go to every day. <laughs> and then when it was mountain biking, same thing. Not races every day, but he could be riding every day. Yeah. And whether I was shuttling or whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you grew up and, and had experience riding horses, did you not? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that was my thing when I was a kid. Yeah. And yeah, loved horses and... Oh, yeah. wow. Equestrian world. No, not, no. Not like that? No. But just more... I went to one show, okay. and um, the guy, the judge said, because I trained my own horse at that age, and I, he said, whatever you're doing, you're doing it right. And that was the only horse, horse, horse show I ever went to. Okay. I was happy with that, and <laughs> I like to just ride. Yeah. And so... Free riding on a horse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> 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 oh cool um so he started riding mountain bikes at 12 and then by 15 he was actually had some races where he beat all the pros yes the elite the pro elite yeah how, how did that make them feel i wonder i'm not sure how they felt i was like holy cow he was really impressed because he actually won money yeah and uh yeah he was 15 and uh, uh was that was that the race? I get confused with some of the races, but that was around the time that he was found by um, Gabe with Fox. Yeah. Um, Gabe Fox with Cove. And I'd taken him to a race and I didn't know his bike had a crack in the frame. And Gabe saw that and said, he can't ride this piece of crap. And so brought us a Cove bike that was basically the pit bike, piece of crap. And Steve was ecstatic and he rode it and won. Wow. And they went, Oh, so this kid is loving the piece of crap bike and winning on the piece of crap bike. And uh, yeah, it kind of went from there. Oh, wow. He had a taste. Yeah. Well, I remember back in the day, some of the fastest pros were like Dustin Adams, Andrew Shandro yeah. in the Canadian world. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Dustin had gone on to get third in the Norba and I think he got a fourth in a World Cup. And he was the most successful downhill racer in Canada up until... Um, at that time until Stevie Smith did what he did at, mm -hmm. at a later date. And Andrew Shandra was very successful, um, you know, getting a, a gold medal in the X Games and then, you know, doing well in some World Cups as well. Um, but the heroes of Steve Smith was Steve Pete, Sam Hill, Greg Menard. Yeah. 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 They were, yeah, that's who I say we because, yeah, I, I watched the races too. I watched all the mountain bike videos because I, I had to. <laughs> <laughs> Mom, watch this with me. <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah, I remember all those, you know, I still have some of the old school kind of stuff at home. That was his, like, you know, VHS. <laughs> 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 well, I can't remember all the different names, but, yeah, we watched all those kind of. And, yeah, he looked up to a lot of those different riders and. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, well, those are the fastest guys in the world at that time. Yeah. And well, Greg Menard just won the World Championships today, so 20 Greg's years amazing. later. Yeah. He just won the Worlds today. Yeah. Pretty amazing. <laughs> yeah. So a lot of people know you from the collective movie Seasons, like mm -hmm. we mentioned earlier, where, you know, you were shuttling Stevie at 17 years old yes. at this point, and 
you know, he was ripping laps, getting faster and faster, and you were getting to you know the road and the potholes <laughs> and racing down. Yep. And you guys were not racing each other, but you guys were like getting, I tried both to getting beat quicker. Him. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I was oh. determined to get down there before him. <laughs> Never did. Yeah. Never did. Oh gee. I could best my best was twelve minutes. His was six. Oh wow. Yeah. You ask any dad up there, the best they can do is twenty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And and uh, where was this at? Mount Provo. Mount Provo. Then they used to tell on me in a fun way. They say, "Oh yeah, I just saw your mom drifting that upper corner and Steve, mom, you got us stop." I said, "Hey, you're having your fun. I'm having mine." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Damn dads, anyhow. Yeah, yeah. And what were you driving then? <laughs> that was the tracker, the green tracker at that point. That's right. Yeah. That th- <laughs> That's what it was in the movie, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I had, I never bought a vehicle. It cost more than $1,000 at that point. So, But that was the iconic one that everyone got to know. I had a lot of other pieces of crap. Yeah. But that's the one everyone, everyone says, just tell the tracker? God, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Um and they go, what happened? Steve killed it. <laughs> he took it without me knowing. Yeah. He thought I wasn't going to be home on time. And he was traveling and had to get somewhere and took it and went onto the highway. And someone had stopped dead in the middle of the highway. He didn't have a license and he hit them. Oh, gee. <laughs> was he a, a wild, wild boy? Must have been. Not right? wild, wild. He was really edgy. Yeah. He, you know. But I was lucky. I had the. I could turn the biking into. You know, he loved it enough. I could use that. Yeah. But yeah, he, he got into his trouble. He was a good boy, but he was no angel. Yeah. 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 Too, I'm honest. You know what they say: too good a boy is not a good boy at all. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> and the worst part was he was very open with me, so I knew everything, even though I didn't want to. It's like, dude, like, you don't have to tell me this. I'm your mom. Yeah. You know, I always called him dude. And he was your little dude. He was my little dude at birth. And I realized right up until the end, I still called him dude. Because people always say, did you call him Steve? Stevie? What? No, dude. Dude. And he never asked me to stop. Yeah. And and what about your daughter? Do you care? Or did you I used to joke her? around and call her dudette. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so my awesome. little dude and dudette. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, that's funny. Uh Stevie, I, I read, uh, worked at Tim Hortons for a while. Yep. How was that? Actually, Tim Hortons was really good with them yeah. um, because they were really open. If he got a phone call to say, hey, can you go to this race? He would contact them and say, hey, can I go away? And they'd say yes. They were very open as long as he, you know, give as much time as he could, you know, warning for them. They were, they were really open. Yeah. And so they were, it was a good place. I've heard, you know, different sides of it, but... Yeah, he did that, and as much as you want to like Tim Hortons, <laughs> um, yeah, he worked there for, I don't even know how long, it wasn't very long, Yeah, because things just, just started changing, and yeah. so fast, Yeah, and uh, but they treated him well. Okay, cool. You know? Yeah, because although he started getting more and more busy, yeah. and traveling more, and racing, and, yeah. and, and doing his thing. But so. why they liked him is... If he called to say, hey, I'm going away, you know, and only give him two days notice and they were good with that, th- sometimes things would change and he'd call him back and say, hey, I'm not going now. And they go, okay, do you want your shifts back? Sure. Yeah. So he would go back to work rather than just, you know, doing nothing. Yeah. Um, so they respected him that way and he respected them. And Good work, ethic. Yeah. 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 He was raised that way. Yeah. But straight up with the customers. Very straight up with the customers. <laughs> he was straight up with everybody. Yes. Yeah, his everything. He um, he didn't beat around the bush. Yeah. He said it like it was, whether you liked it or not. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, but Tim Hortons didn't mind that. No. I, no, they would call him in because they are on a timer. And if the timer, the kids working at that point got behind, they would call Steve in because he wouldn't take crap from anybody and said, no, this is what you ordered. I got it here. Move on. Boom. Boom. You're out of here. Yeah. You know, I don't have time to count change. Just, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and just, he'd get them back up to speed and then they'd send them home. <laughs> of course. On the clock. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He had a different attitude. Yeah. Yeah. So he's raising some money working at Tim Hortons. Um, and, you know, he's didn't, uh, he did some BC Cups and Canada Cups and he's getting faster and faster, you know, beating some pro elites in Canada Cup and whatnot, making a, a name for himself. And uh, Gabe Fox has is, is, is found him. Uh, he, he did like a couple years with the Cove. Uh, 
Yeah. And then a couple years with Evil, I believe. Yep. Two with each. Yeah. Um, but his first international race was in Rotorua. I think it was the World Champs. Yep. But and it was in Rotorua. Sure. And you traveled around with your daughter and yes. your son, Kara and Stevie, um, around uh Well, actually, I, I traveled with Kara because she came to, she was in Australia. She came to New Zealand to hang out and see me. I hadn't seen her in six months. And so while Steve was training, we were touring around oh. and seeing seeing New Zealand. Oh, and cool. then we, you know, stopped back, check in on them and go about, go about our business. And yeah, it was a real whirlwind. It was awesome. Yeah. I would love to go back. Yeah. Oh, it's beautiful for yeah, sure. It New is. Zealand is an amazing country. It's like here. Yeah. Yeah. I could, that's, if I had to live anywhere else in the world, that would be it. Yeah. I would say almost the same for me too. It's yeah. beautiful. Once you get used to the smell of sulfur from. Yeah. Rotorua. <laughs> didn't you, didn't you have some bass in some hot springs? Like. Oh yeah. 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 We're driving around wrong side of the road <laughs> constantly and saw steam in the, in the bush. And so we just stopped on the side of the road. It's just me and my daughter and. We didn't care. Stripped down, down our underwear, running, you know, on the side of the road and went and sat in these hot springs. It was just amazing. Awesome. Like, how much better can it get? Yeah. You know, it was so cool. Oh, wow. I love it. Yeah. Got to love it there. Totally. <laughs> so he started racing uh, World Cup, uh, racing junior men, mm-hmm. and he started doing well. He got a yeah. second and a third, I believe. Yeah. yeah. And... Um, I don't know what year that was, but that must have been, uh, two, well, 2000. Well, yeah. Mont St. Anne's. 2007, 2008 with the Cove. Yeah. And 2009, 2010 with Evil, something like that. Yeah, I'm so bad on dates. Yeah. Bad mom, bad mom. Yeah. But but <laughs> as he's racing in, in Europe, he eventually, um, you know, was racing with Evil. He was traveling in a bus, a big, yes. big bus. <laughs> they with, had the uh, Evil Polk. bus. The evil bus. The evil bus that was decorated with huge pictures of the evil team. Maddie Leaconin and uh, Philip uh, Polk. Philip Polk. And Steve. And so, yeah, they did the whole um, see no evil, hear no evil thing. Yep. And so, yeah. So they had this huge bus where they lived on it and traveled all over Europe for all the races. Looked like a fancy bus. It was really fancy. Yeah. Yeah. It was uh, pretty awesome. He was... Pretty impressed, and a lot of the family's like, wow, they have a bus with your picture on it. It's like, yeah, and that's when Grandma Grandpa went, oh, maybe he is good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, then he picked up a Red Bull sponsorship. Yes. How did that go? Like, is there a bunch of criteria you have to do to, to make the, yeah. the Red Bull team? Did they get a custom peanut helmet? Like, well, yeah. Like, uh, this is a later one, but like, to get one of these, you have to, what do you have to do? Like, how did it, how did it go for him? And- it was quite the process from what, you know, um, you have to be doing well at your sport, of course, but they also have to like you. You have to be a good person in their view. It took a lot of interviews because I remember him going to an interview and I'm like, and it's a fancy dinner and I'm, you know, you know, ha- all worried about, you know, is he going to throw an F-bomb or use the wrong fork? And he's like, Mom, I've been doing this stuff. I'm okay. (laughs) He goes, I know more than you do when it comes to this. I was like, yeah, you do. (laughs) But yeah, it was a lot of interviews, um, getting to know him and before they actually join you on. Yeah. It was the, that's right. It was the opening of seasons where he was given his helmet. We're at Whistler for the, for the premiere. Oh, wow. All of a sudden, I remember. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. The premiere. And he was given his Red Bull helmet then. He didn't know he was getting it. Surprise. It was, yeah. That's when it happened. Yeah. yeah. And then, like, that makes you legit. Like, yeah. you're like, only, like, a few people get those. Yeah. Yeah, they have rules. I think it's changed. It used to be only one, one rider in the discipline per country. So as long as he had a Red Bull helmet, no other Canadian could ride Red Bull. Yeah. Now I think it's two. Okay. I was talking to some of the guys and they said it's two now. Yeah. So I don't know quite when that changed. Okay. Um, but that's how it was when he was doing it. Yeah. And so he would have to quit racing or do whatever, you know, and then the next person could step up. Yeah. And be a Red Bull rider. Okay. Yeah. Oh, wow. I hope I'm right. That's yeah. how I understood it. But there's definitely criteria. We're no... Yeah. Yeah. As mom, I just exactly kind of... they do now, but... I was a deer in headlights the whole way, just eyes wide going, oh my God, what's going on? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
He sounds like he's just, fast. <laughs> yep, just go with flow. Do what they tell me. Yeah. <laughs> Smile. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so that was 19 years old when he's traveling around in the bus yep. with Philippe Polk and Mary Leah Conan. Um, and then he did in, I think they filmed it in 2009 and it came out in 2010, Follow Me. Yes. With um, uh, in New Zealand. With G. Yeah. G. Atherton. Yeah. And, Which uh, is really cool. Yeah. Considering... The 2013. Yeah, how that went down when they were yeah. neck and neck in in uh, the yeah. chase for the overall. But it looked like he was flying. I was like, okay, G was like an established racer by then. Well, that's yeah. where I'm going, oh my God, he's riding with G. Atherton. Yeah. <laughs> I was dumbstruck by all these riders. I was just as much a, a mountain bike geek as he was. Yeah. You know, it's like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah. But he was rocking it and killing it. And they were like, just like filming. Yeah. Like, just like two fighter jet pilots. Yeah. Wow. And that's super cool. So that was legit. So that, you know, like Seasons was super cool and iconic. But then Follow Me just legit, legitimized, made him legit. Yeah. Legitimized yeah. him. Yeah. Yeah. And the trails just looked awesome. And, and it really kind of like put New Zealand out there as, as a, a wicked riding destination. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that footage is insane. Wow. So 2010... Um, was when he went to the Mont Saint Anne um, World Championships, and I was covering the event for Pink Bike, and he invited me to come on a track walk with him, where he was showing uh, Thomas Vanderham and Ryan Vanderham, the Vanderham brothers, um, the track. Mm-hmm. And he's like, "Hey, you want to come and join us, Tip?" I'm like, "Sure." And so I was blown away. Like he was showing us, you know, you know, the lines, and he was like, "Yeah, if you take off here, you could land down there by Tippy's foot." And I remember, like, Thomas Vanderham is a very amazing rider, and Ryan's a very talented rider too, but. We were both all looking at each other like, you're going to take off where and then where? And there's all these big chunky rocks. And we we're just like, really? And he's like, yeah, yeah. You see there, you just backside on that and then just pump through that. And then you can gap that and miss all those chunky rocks. And we we're just kind of like, blah, 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 blah. whoa, it blew my mind. And then I'm watching the race and he did those lines he was talking about. And uh, there was a little bit of rain that came in and, and uh he, he did it in the rain, you know, and blew our minds and got a silver medal in behind Sam Hill, yeah. who was one of his heroes. Yep. And, uh, you know, I, I got to, to do interval. I think it was Greg Menard in third, uh, Stevie in second with the silver medal, and then Sam Hill got the gold. And I did interviews with them, and uh, it really put him on the map big time. I think that's when they still called him Sender Steve. Yeah. Uh, because he either sent it and... Took it all, or he lost everything. <laughs> Checkers and rackers. <laughs> well, then he went, went on to become known as Chainsaw. Yes, named you know yeah. by 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 Rob. My, yeah, <laughs> and th- that's that's an awesome, an yeah, awesome yeah, nickname. Chainsaw Massacre. <laughs> yeah, he love- came home and he goes, "What the is that name?" I said, "That is freaking." awesome I yeah. said you can't pick your names your nickname yeah and so and it turned out you know into shortened a chainsaw but it was a canadian chainsaw massacre originally <laughs> warner rob warner of course oh yeah yeah gotta love rob yeah <laughs> yeah such a good dude so yeah. funny amazing announcer yes and uh the best yeah the dispenser of nicknames yeah yeah <laughs> and it's stuck right chainsaw. yeah yeah chainsaw yeah and people ask where it all. So I don't know if he saw it, but I wonder. There is a picture of Steve. I bought him a little green Poulon <laughs> Canadian Tire chainsaw for doing trails. You know, one of those little guys. You yeah. know, I, I actually still have it. Steve kept everything. Yeah. And so I found that after he. And so I have it. But I think Warner saw a picture of him in his one of his little shops holding up this little. <laughs> and that's kind of where it also. I think that was part. I've never actually talked to Rob Warner, but I think those go hand in hand. Yeah. And he saw that picture. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. I know someone, someone warned you when you meet Rob, like, you got to be careful. He's pretty full on. Uh, well, they obviously don't know you. You're pretty full on. <laughs> yeah, I can be. Yeah. It, it's totally. family. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that was amazing for him to get a silver medal in the world. Sandwiched between two legendary racers, all we firmly established, yes. and put himself really on the map more than ever. And um, he went on, you know, in 2011, 2012, to have a string of podiums and and amazing yeah. results. 
And um, he got his first World Cup win when? At Norway? Norway. Yes. I'll never forget that. At the end of 2012. Yeah. Last race. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, it was just because it's like here. And so it was just like Provo for him. Okay. Yeah. And it was wet. It was mucky. It was disgusting. It was everything he loved. Yeah. And when he came home after winning, he looked at me and all of a sudden he goes, I'm not going to want to win anymore. I am going to win. Is that what he said? It was a, it was this whole frame of mind because he'd always said, I want to win. I want to win. I want to win. Yeah. And when he did, and then he realized, I can win. I'm going to win. And then 2013 came along. And then he won it all. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Let's talk about that. So 2013, he had a very close battle with G. Atherton um, yes. throughout the season. And it came down to the last race. I believe G was in the lead by 17 points. Mm-hmm. So qualities counted. Yes, qualities were, and, and could finals. make him break. Yeah. Yeah. So he's trailing by 17 points behind G. And um, when when they hit the race, uh, Bruni was in the hot seat. And he uh, beat Josh Bryceland, who was in the hot seat at the time, by four seconds. And um, G went down, and he was second behind Bruni. Yeah. And then McKenna beat G by <laughs> half a second. <laughs> and then... You know, G, or I mean, sorry, Stevie won qualifying, so he's the last rider down. Yeah. And all the pressure was on him. Yeah. And what did he do? He had a precise, error free run, fully pinned. Yeah. And he just didn't try and beat G. He won the whole thing, yeah. the whole race, won the first split, and then just carried it all the way to the finish. And he won the World Cup overall. Yeah. Right here. There it is. All dusty from the race. <laughs> <laughs> All dusty from the local racer, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice to see for the kid for the kids to see this. Yes, that's why I bring it. Yeah, because they all go, "Can I touch it?" Of yeah. course you can touch yeah. it. And I tell them, you know, feel how heavy it is. Yeah, you know, it's pretty amazing. That's the real deal, right there. Yeah, many people, you know, consider that the World Cup overall, you know, most of them is 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 better than the World Championship because this I, is like yes consistency. Yes, different conditions, different mountains. Yeah, you know. And, you know, the World Cup overall it shows that you are truly the best in the world. Yeah, I believe that one, too. Um, I mean, nothing against the World Championship, which we just had. Um, yeah, so many things. What, that one little thing at a championship can blow it. Yeah. It's like, I forget what year. He, uh, it was Africa. He first corner, just out comes the bike. He goes down in the dust, jumps up and goes, what the was that? And so he was actually, um, people, you know, oh, he should have got on and tried. He could have still made it in that world championship. It's one. You either Go win, the win or you lose. Yeah. There's no points to gather, nothing. So he came down and gave everyone a show. I think he did a bar hump at the very end. He did, yeah. 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 And, uh, and that's when people say, oh, he should have tried. It's like, no, it's gone. Wasn't he went down. Win. There's no way he could have. He may have made podium. But who cares? He would have rather have given a show. Yeah. And that's what he did. Yeah. You know, because who else does a bar hump? <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. And so that's, and yeah, it was, <laughs> I'll, yeah, I'll never forget. I'm just like, oh. <laughs> well, at one point he, he went from um, uh, 26 inch tires to 27.5. And then he lost it in the first corner. And then he went back to 26 to win that. And I thought that was amazing. And then eventually went back to 27.5 when it got, you know, the technology got yeah. a better with angles and whatnot. But um, <laughs> it, I remember that first corner blowing it. And, you know, that's what happens. It, I've got an interesting note here that when uh, he won the uh, the last uh, race of the year, it was at Leo Gang, Austria. Yes. And then won the overall in 2013. Steve Pete uh, actually got ninth at 39 years old. And, you know, showing that he could still hang, yeah. you know, at 39, you know, top Amazing. 10 result. And today, like we mentioned earlier, Greg Menard won the world championships at 39 years old. Yeah. 
Yeah. It's amazing. I was so excited when I saw that. Yeah. I haven't seen all the results. I saw that. And, you know, I did a quick little. <laughs> yeah. Tell us about when you met Greg Menard. Did... Okay. I, it was at Whistler Crankworks, and I go, I think it was a SRAM tent. And so I go in there, and I see him there, and he goes, Hi, I, I'm Greg Menard. And I said, I know I've seen your movies. I'm all, you know, oh, my God. And he goes, and I said, Hi, I'm, I'm, I'm Tian Smith. I'm Steve Smith's mom. He goes, I know I've seen your movie. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, you are so cute. <laughs> And just a really, really nice guy. And I'll just, I'll never forget that. He just, you know, here's this superstar of mountain biking in my, you know, I've been watching the movies. I watched him and he knew me. I'm like, oh my God. I yeah. was so excited. And, you know, <laughs> yeah. He, That's really cool. Everybody out there. I just love them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, he, you get to know these people in, in times yeah. of, 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 of stress and duress and, and, and adrenaline and whatnot. And, you know, I think in the mountain bike world, you make friendships because people are really hanging out there and you mm-hmm. get to know what people are really made of yeah. when they're with stretch the limit and going for it and whatnot. So it's yeah. uh, it's pretty deep and pretty pretty intense and pretty pretty cool, the friendships and bonds that you make with people. Yes, yeah. You know? Yeah, they're, they're friends out there. Yeah. You know, they may race against each other, but they're buddies. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Super cool. Well... Your boy was fastest in the world, world, you know, cup overall champion, and uh, proved himself over and over that he was truly, you know, one of the best in the world. But the year after, in 2014, was the year of injuries for him. Yes. How many, it's times almost, heard, how many times did he hurt his ankle? It broke it three times. Yeah. Broke one, broke the other, broke one. <laughs> Is that how it went? Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. And, uh, it's almost, I've heard sort of, you know, when you win, your next year isn't so good. <laughs> it seems that's kind of a common thing from what I've heard. Like, I don't know. Like, how, kind of like a curse. Kind of yeah. Like, you won, so yeah, we're going to kick you in the ass now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm taking down a notch. Yeah, yeah. Fate. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, let's not let you get too cocky. Yeah, we're going to test you and see what you yeah. really may have. And they do. It, it is test. It is trying on them. Yeah. And so how tough was that on him to not be able to ride his bike? Like, what, what was his mental state at, it at that point? It was really tough on him. Um, honestly, at that point, he was so stressed that he wasn't fulfilling his contract contracts and doing what he is supposed to because he's not racing. And it actually, he actually got shingles from it. Because I remember he phoned me going, have I had chicken pox? I'm like, uh, well, your sister did. Well, what do you mean? Have I said... I don't remember. He goes, what do you mean? What kind of mom are you? Not, And he's freaking out, right? He goes, yeah. I got shingles. Isn't that for old people? <laughs> and it has something to do with chicken pox. I said, well, dude, if you had them, they weren't bad. You know, you didn't. He goes, well, the doctor said I had them. I said, then you had them. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you arguing with me? <laughs> but yeah, he got shingles due to stress. Yeah. And so, yeah, I was a little concerned about him at that point. You know, that he... Is this going to bring him down? Is he going to turn another direction that we don't want because he's stressed? You know? Um, like and, a darker path. Yeah. And that can happen because, he, you know, I was concerned about alcohol. You know, it's in the family. Alcohol problems. Yeah. And so I had to real. I kept an eye on him and, you know, we've always been open about it. Yeah. Um, about that. And, you know, and he's always, mom, don't worry when it comes to racing. You know, I like to party, but... I know when to stop. I'm like, okay. And then one day he did say to me, so when did you quit partying? And I went, it was my 25th birthday party when I beat up everyone in my house because I like to wrestle. <laughs> and he goes, he was 23 at that time. And he went, oh, I got two more years. I thought, yeah, you do. I'll give you to your 25. Yeah, then yeah. you got to start mellowing out a bit. <laughs> Sounds like a Smith. <laughs> yeah, we like, we both actually... He liked to actually fight. <laughs> I liked to wrestle. I would take the biggest guy down. Yeah. If I was drinking, that's um, what made me quit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You're so. like, okay, reel this in. Yeah. This is embarrassing now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so three broken ankles. Yep. 2014, having to sit out, made it through with a, with a good mental attitude, but you were yep. worried about him. Yeah. Um, in 2015, he got back to racing, but he was still healing. He thought he was ready. But he, he was, wasn't back to speed. What did he say when he came back and he realized he, was he wasn't really at shocked. his normal, normal speed? He was, you know, he had trained really hard here and, you know, doing everything he's supposed to. And he felt like he was back there. But he hadn't been on a world-class track yeah. 
for over a year. So when he got out there, he came home, he went, I'm not ready yet. I really, ha-. so he had, he started working really hard. Not that he wasn't working hard before that, but it made him realize, you know, one year and he had a lot of catching up. I can't remember exactly where he was placing. I mean, he wasn't waiting. I'm pretty sure he was still in the top 20, but he wasn't where he wanted to be. He, he felt he was, when he went, he was there, but he wasn't there yet that yeah. year. Yeah. It wasn't till the following year. Well, you, you need that experience and, and yeah. knowing where the line is. And, and when you're racing, you know. It only took the first race for me to go, okay, <laughs> we yeah. need to. This is World Cup level. Yeah. 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 Forgot what it was, really was. Yeah. You know, kicking ass at Mount Prevost doesn't do it anymore. Yeah. You know. Um, Interesting. So it was it was a bit of a ooh, yeah. eye opener. Okay. And, but then he came home and just. Got down to it. Yeah. Like so in 2016, he he got second in the first race, was it yeah, not? Yeah, second place. Yeah. and First race went, of the year, first World Cup of the year. Yeah, first World Cup, and we went, he's back. Yeah. And he was. Yeah. He came home just flying high because he didn't expect quite that, knowing where he was the year before. Yeah. He would have been happy if he got back in, like, top 10. But to get a second, he was, as he would say, he's just totally stoked. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I remember you saying that, you know, you were worried about his mental state the year before, mm-hmm. and that second was like a good point. But then he had a low point; he got a flat. But, but at the same he, time, his attitude was yeah. was okay with it because he didn't trade it like a low point. Um, that was the race in uh, his final race. That was in Australia, and he got a flat, and he came over the finish line doing a wheelie and a fist pump. And I remember sitting at home watching that, and going, "Oh my God, he is maturing. Yeah. He's now going from that crazy." You know, he's maturing. Yeah. He's not angry. Whenever Steve lost a race and was away, I just never, I didn't contact him right away because what do you say? Yeah. Good, you know, better luck next time. No, not with him. He needed a cool down period for anything like that. And then he would contact me. Yeah. We always left it that way. And, but seeing that race, I went, I was so happy seeing that maturity. And, you know, he was... Yeah, he was 26 at that time and coming into himself more so. Yeah. Because I always felt riders seemed to peak. Their peak was 26 to 30. So 26 was kind of the time they really, because men don't stop growing until they're 25. Yeah. So in my view, he, when he won in, at 23, he was quite young. Yeah. And uh, I didn't, I, I knew there was a part of me. I knew he would do it. He would win. But I didn't expect it then. Yeah. I always thought 26. Sam Hill was the only one who didn't do it. He was a baby when he did it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but he's a whole other story. Yeah. You know, love him too. <laughs> yeah. Well, he was, you know, not winning every race, but he was on the podium a lot with those guys. And mm-hmm. you were saying that he was okay to be in the podium because those were his heroes. Yeah. And to be in the mix with those guys, oh, he was yeah. still good with it. He was good with that. He Wanted was- to win. Yeah. Trying to win. But a podium with He's the legends. He's on with the, t- the legends, the people that we'd been looking up to, that we'd been watching movies about. And, oh, yeah, even I was like, oh, my God, it's Sam Hill. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was like, yeah, I was just this little, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so he can't did a fist pump even though he got the flat. He got the second. Yeah. He was training so hard yeah. and he was ready to rock. Yeah. That, unfortunately, was, was his last race. Yes. Last World Cup in Australia. Yeah. And um, in 2016, we lost TV. Yeah. And um, he, he, he never made it to the next race in yeah. Scotland. Yeah. And, um, you know, it was, it was a tragic, tragic loss. You know, we, yeah. many people feel robbed of, of one of their heroes and you lost your boy. Mm-hmm. And um, he, he never made it to Scotland. Um, but the respect and the love that outpoured that, from the community in Scotland oh, is legendary with, with, with yes. the train and the ghost run. And, and tell it, us about that. that. It just amazed me. First, when they did the train, all every rider there wearing a long live chainsaw shirt, red. I always love trains. <laughs> I don't know why I yeah. love trains. And um, to see it and all of them doing that, it was over, obviously overwhelming. I mean, yeah, I bawled my eyes out like a baby. Yeah. I still do when I see it. 
Yeah. It's just so the love that they showed for him. And then for that whole ghost run, I'd never ever known any, that to ever happen before. They've never done that for anyone else ever before. It was a, it was a suggestion in the comments in Pink Bike. Yeah. And then they actually did it. I, I remember reading those comments going, I was shocked. And I couldn't believe just over and over people asking, asking the UCI to do that. And then shocked that they actually did because it's not up to them to acknowledge a lost racer. I get, I don't know. It just, I was shocked and I couldn't believe it was, it, it made my heart burst with pride that he had so much love out there, but watching it, I still, when I watch it, I still watch it. Yeah. You know, there's those days you want to, you know, and, uh, it's amazing that crowd, 30,000 people. Because they're normally off the decibel charts. Oh, yeah. And the respect and the, and yeah, the, and the love was, during that ghost. And I watched was, it and and I could see him. You know, and so it was amazing and it was wonderful. In one hand, you know, it's awful it had to happen. But I, it made, you know, just... I love this community. I love the whole biking community there it's an awesome group and the respect they showed for him is amazing yeah it's yeah they didn't at the beginning they did it where he was ranked you know because he got a second and then, yes and, and, he was, and then a uh, flat so i i don't even know what, what his position but it's where was. he would have been yes it was exactly where and that's what they did yeah yes yeah. this is where steve would run and then they very, very yeah. touching, touching yeah. display of, of respect. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it was, yeah. <laughs> so, so now, you know, you, you're such a brave lady and, and, you know, you're, you're still, you know, coming out to the Stevie Smith, you know, Memorial Downhill and sharing your, your, your experience and your love and your and some of these memorabilia with these medals for the young racers to touch. I see you there, you're yeah. talking to them and talking with all the kids and, and you know, you give away a rebel helmet every year, a, a raffle draw and uh, one of his jerseys every year. Mm -hmm. And um, I want it to go to the people that love it. Yeah. And you raise money for the Stevie Smith yeah. Legacy Foundation, which yeah. gives back to young racers yeah. in, in Canada. Yeah. And um, it's, 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 it's something that you do, you know, to, to, to give back and, and to stay in touch with this community. And, yeah. you know, because you've, you've made friends over the years with so many of yeah. us. And uh, it's, it's just a, it's a, it's a very valiant thing that I think that you do with, with the Stevie Smith Legacy well, Foundation. And it also gives me an opportunity to talk about them. Yeah. I mean, lots of people, but everybody wants. I could talk about them forever, of course. Yeah. These are my kids. Yeah. You know? This is what Jordy Lenz's mom said, is that, yeah. you know, she's worried that people are, are not going to want to talk about it. Like, it's a taboo subject. And she goes, she wants to talk about her son. That's and it's so okay if I cry. Yeah. Don't don't get worried if I cry. Cry, you know. It's, a, it's an okay thing. It's a healing thing. Yeah. And I love hearing stories about people I've met him. And, you know, you hear about it. I met him on a chairlift and he talked to me. And just like I was, he's a regular person. Or I saw him. I met him. He was coming down a down a, a run and he stopped because we're we're working on a jump and he stops and picks up a shovel and so you hear all this stuff and I like to hear that then I also like to hear about the kids that look up to him yeah part of mine and Steve's last conversation we had a we hung out the day before his accident and we had long conversation but part was he was looking to buy property his next property so that he could build a dirt jumps and bike park for kids because we never he never had that there was no such thing and that was his next goal was to buy five acres in Lanceville which is just outside of Nanaimo yeah and so that's partly why we did the bike park for him because that's what he wanted and so the community the city everybody it was amazing that came together I'd go to the bike park every day when it's being worked on I start crying because there'd be 10, 20, 30 people out there doing all this for free, all this labor. I had guys messaging me going, I don't have money to help, but I, I can really dig well. 
you know, and it was amazing that outpouring of support, uh, whether it's um, the city of Nanaimo or people that donate their time or organized stuff. Because people always think me. It was everybody. I was, at that point, I was just, I was in a fog. Yeah. You know, so no, I didn't build the park. Of course I was there and people, you know, it was a community effort. There was a lot of people to be thanked for doing that. Yeah. And wow. yeah, it, yeah, it was pretty amazing. Well, that's one way to keep his legacy alive for yeah. sure. And, and the, you know, the, those the foundation kids and the, and the bike park. Yeah. Um, is, is, is amazing. And there's so many little young rippers that, okay. you know, we've all, we all, he was a hero to so many of us, yeah. you know, and like, I'm an older free rider, but you know, I, I've, you know, raced world cup snowboarding, but I love, I follow the downhill circuit religiously. And he was a friend of mine. I interviewed him so many times, so mm-hmm. many crank works where he won, you know, like the, the garbanzo downhill, the, the Canadian he hated Open, that one. The air downhill. It's painful. It's, it's a long, painful one, yeah, but he won it. them all. And, um, Sometimes he would time his flat flights back so he wouldn't have to race it. Because it was his first one. <laughs> oh. Um, yeah. I think you're very brave for, for doing what you do. And, and I respect what you, what you do to, to, to come on and talk to these kids. And, and like you say, you want to hear stories. And, you know, I lost my dad years ago. And I love hearing stories about yeah. my dad. So I can relate a little bit, you know. And, and I love um, it, too, when I'm at the booth and, like, this weekend, you know, there's 10, 12 boys that are, you know, anywhere from 10 to 17 stand there talking and asking questions and, you know, looking at his stuff and, you know, asking me questions. Some I can't answer because, yes, I don't remember every little instant. Yeah. But the look in their eyes and I can see him all over the place. So that it's, it helps me. So it's not just, you know, I'm there because I can see this and reach out and I love it. Well, he's created a wave and a momentum for Canadian downhillers. You know, Jackson Goldstone won the world championships this morning and men's junior. Yeah. Gracie Hemstreet got third in women's junior. You know, there's Elliot Jameson and Mark Wallace. And and she's an island girl. Or or Sunshine Coast? Uh, Close enough. Close enough. Yeah. (laughs) It's it's, it's close enough. Um, You know, Mark Wallace and and Elliot Jameson and Finn Isles and so many young Canadians rocking the downhill um, circuit. Look at Lucas, Lucas Cruz mm-hmm. and, you know, there, it so goes Seth on Sherlock. And, on. and there's so many young yeah. BC Cup riders who have been shown the way by CV that they can do it. And they're doing it. Yeah. And um, they're amazing. And I will never say, you know, pick a favorite because I just like to think of them as they're all my boys. Yeah. All my BC boys. Yeah. <laughs> Canada boys, whatever. Totally. You know. Magnus Manson, Forrest oh. Riesco. Like, the list goes on. There's yes. like, I don't know where to begin. There's so many. Yeah. And th- they are doing it. And Stevie did it. Yeah. For well, Dustin Adams back in the day had yeah. some great results in Andrew Shandro and um, Dave Watson, but no one rocked the house like Stevie Smith. He's our greatest Canadian downhiller of all time, and um, he's shown them that what is possible. So he's he's created a, a movement and, and uh, is an inspiration beyond a shadow of a doubt. It's just it's just amazing to see um, today and still living through all these other racers. Yeah, and and. <laughs> You know, the stoke at the Stevie Swift Memorial today at the downhill. Oh, yeah. It was amazing. It is amazing. So today at the Stevie Smith Memorial, um, you went and did a a zip line. (laughs) Yes, I did. (laughs) (laughs) I've been trying to conquer my fear of heights. And also, I think I hit a point finally where I'm healing. And I want to think of Steve always live life. I don't like to the fullest because I say that about everyone. He didn't waste a minute. And so I kind of changed my tune. I don't want to waste a minute anymore. Yeah. And I want to do things. I, You know, I've got this huge bucket list thing. And so didn't realize that was on it. And But yeah, I did the three hour <laughs> zip line. Uh, like four zip lines? Like four zip lines. Yeah. <sighs> when you're 100, yeah. 100 feet First in First one, grabbed on, closed my eyes. And went for it. Yeah. Opened them up right away so I could see where I was going. Yeah. And then by the second one, I wanted to race the dad that was next to me. <laughs> <laughs> You're a smith. Huh? Yeah. yeah. He won. Damn it. Yeah. And then so I'm going, so what do you think is the best body position for, you know, 
He goes, well, I think you really need to tuck up. I'm like, okay. So the next run, which is the third one, which you can get up to speeds of 100 kilometers an hour. <laughs> and I just tucked up as much as I could and I just gave her. I think he might have let me win. <laughs> Because that's what I said. I said, thanks for letting me win. <laughs> <laughs> and then the last one's kind of the longest, where you get to go over Mount Washington and all the people. And yeah, so I did the, you're not allowed to let go and wave. You want to, but they don't let you do that. You have to keep, ho- well, if you let go, you stop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. You got to be holding it down. But yeah, it was amazing. It that's was like, cool. it was, yeah, it's wow. so cool. I'm just so glad I got the chance to finally do something like that. And one more bucket list gone. Yeah. Well, I know uh, that at the Canadian Nationals this year, you did your first keg stand. <laughs> I just missed it. I came in and I saw the video and I, I heard the big cheer and everyone mm. and everyone was doing keg stands and it, like you were like, got talked into it. So you did a keg stand, your first one. Yes. Yes. Is this a true story? <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> I don't know if I should tell the truth here, what I really did. <laughs> Anyhow, I'm watching them do the cake stand. They're wanting me to do it. I'm going, yeah, no, 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 no. I've been working on losing weight. I'm not drinking all that beer. And they're bugging me and I'm watching. And finally I say, okay, I'll do this. And they're like, eyes wide. Rippers are like, oh my God. The Rippers Lounge Racers? Yes. Yeah. Yes. They're, they're the ones trying to talk me into it. <laughs> but I had a method to my madness because I thought I'm not cutting calories in. I am working too hard. And then I'm thinking, okay, I have two fake hips. <laughs> Are those going to blow it aside? Yeah. You also have to have body strength to hold your your weight up. In a handstand position. In a handstand position. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm almost 60 years old. What the hell am I doing? <laughs> but I also knew when they go, if they got me up there, <laughs> I could let the beer go in one side and out the other. <laughs> and now they're going to probably be really mad at me because I faked it. <laughs> <laughs> but... For me, it was like... You got this, them all stoked because they... It was they, a morale yeah. booster kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, totally. And, but never mind them being stoked. I get home and I'm supposed to go camping with my brother's family and they're going, she's been hot because I don't drink around them because I don't really drink a lot. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and so they're all stoked because they've seen this <laughs> YouTube that went out within minutes and I'm like, I found out it's like 15, 15 minutes on YouTube. I'm like, oh my God, I got for my daughter. She's going to kill me. <laughs> I really care I didn't do it. <laughs> She's like my mother. Yeah. She's the best though. She worries. And that's okay. Yeah. I love her. Oh man. <laughs> so I admitted it to the world or whatever, mountain bike world. Hey. Yeah. You, as long as you got the stoke out there, everyone was jazzed. And that's what it was all about. And do you know how many times I've seen people buy shooters for Cedric Gracia and he's like over the shoulder? <laughs> and he has this whole drinking image about him. Party he's guy. Party guy. Yeah. 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 But, so, yeah. So the Rippers Lounge now know I faked it. I've been hiding it out from him. <laughs> I said it so and they went, tip a woman, faking it. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, that's funny. I won't say the other name who fakes it out there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. What's that joke? Why do women fake orgasms? Because men fake foreplay. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so the other thing that um, you got to do at the Nationals, or after your um, pseudo keg stand, um, you and I both, and a few of us, uh, all got to jump in the adaptive bikes because they had the adaptive bikes yeah. um, uh, allowed in, or not allowed, but uh, racing. A- added to the racing yeah. on the on the Canada Cup and BC Cup. Awesome. And, guys. Um, the Dunbar Sum- the Dunbar Cycle Summer Series with Stephen Nexley. Uh, and so we had a bunch of adapter racers, and we we're sitting around partying in the pits after. And they said, take one for a rip. So a bunch of us did. I wiped out. A bunch of us wiped out on them. Everybody wiped out. Everybody wiped out. But you. And you're doing laps around the log cabin. <laughs> they were so much fun. The full suspension and the electric oh, yeah. engine on the back. And they're, they used to be four wheels back in the day, but now they're three with a single wheel in the back and double in the front with like these bah truck suspension. Yeah. Miniature. They're bah, like thing. dating myself. Uh, Mad Max. Yeah. I was like, oh my God, this is like a Mad Max bike. Yeah. They were so fun, eh? <laughs> they were just a hoot. So, you know, like I said, you were the only one that didn't crash, but we're all <laughs> ripping around doing laps. And um, I actually had a race with Remy Gauvin, and I beat Remy in the last corner, took him in the last <laughs> corner after he blew it. And uh, 
Rob Sam. Venables was sitting still and went, think, just dip right over. Yeah. It was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Yeah. But they were really fun. And, you know, we all had a blast. And Sally Stanier saw how much fun you had. And she, little did you know, <laughs> since then, she's been raising money and talking to, I think Red Bull put in some money. And, and there's a whole list of people that put in yeah. money. And the Rivers Lounge Racers. And there's a list of people um, who... Some were um, like the lounge, the Rivers Lounge, so like our companies, and then single people. Yeah. It's yeah, there's like, a GoFundMe, and we all kept it secret from you. Yeah. And... <laughs> Hell, even the photographers knew. Yeah. Yeah, everybody knew, but me. Yeah. So at <laughs> seating, um, at the riders meeting yesterday, on the seating date, after the seating race was over... You were presented with your own adaptive bow head, which is the yeah. you know latest and greatest design in and adaptive bikes. You were presented with an adaptive bike with like wicked suspension and Magura brakes and yeah. an electric engine, and, and you were given one, which was I, absolutely amazing. I was so shocked when I was asked to come up because they wanted to award me for being, I can't remember what the words, you know, because I do this, and it's like... Oh, that's really nice. I'm thinking a plaque, a t-shirt kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. And then when Sally comes up, I'm like, why is she here? Yeah. What's going on? And then I saw it and I'm like, oh my God. And then when they said they're giving it to me, I was just at a loss of words. Like, I didn't know what to say. You were speechless. Yeah. Yeah. Literally speechless and crying and oh my God, crying, oh my God. Like, I just couldn't believe it. It's, yeah. It was oh. so cool, yeah. You're, I, saw, I was standing like this close to you, <laughs> and the, you look on your face, your eyes just went. <laughs> and then you're like. Total confusion. And <laughs> right? Like. Like, that's not a little thing. It's a big thing. and It's, it's a huge it's thing. It's a high-tech machine. It's the best. I, th- I think the bowheads are. But guess what? I have a set of Stevie handlebars, his signature handlebars at home hanging on the oh, wall. Oh, yeah? They said I can put them on. Oh, nice. They can, they'll fit. Yeah. Because it's all mountain bike stuff. Yeah. So I can be real, you know, get out there and be a real poser and I can have <laughs> Steve's handlebars on. Well, you went for a rip right away. Oh, yeah. And you needed a helmet, so you put on uh, one of Stevie's, you know. I don't know if it was that one or I think the, other, the one. other one. Yeah, the one yeah. with the, Or maybe yeah. it was this one. I don't know. It was one know. of them. And you went for a little rip right away. Yeah. Yeah. So cool. Yeah. Yeah. Hats oh. off to them. And, and that's a, that shows the love that the community has for you. And yeah. that's, yeah, it was just, I couldn't believe it. Like, it was huge. Yeah. You know, when you're like, thinking. Who of us can afford something like that? And for them to do that and <laughs> talk to some companies and As personal people. As I'm driving people. a 1989 RV that I have to keep jump starting. Yeah. Jump starting <laughs> I'm going to give you a jump start tonight. <laughs> that's right. Cause, or I'm not going home. <laughs> I'll be sleeping in it again. <laughs> oh, well, that's amazing. Yeah. Wow. Well, congrats for that. And I hope you have some fun rips on that. Oh, oh yeah. I've already talked to Magnus and a few of the boys and we can go do Provo. Maybe I can't ride those, tra- those trails, but they, we can all go to the top and we can rally it down. You ride some of them. <laughs> that's right. Totally. So Magnus is right into that and the cruise boys and it, you know, and plus I'll others. I'll rip with you sometime. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Now, I, instead of taking my kayak, I mean, well, I'm hoping I, I might have a trailer because I had Steve's trailer and I gave it to someone yeah. saying, if I ever need it, let me, I get to use it, but yeah. you can have it. So I have a trailer. And so the adaptive bike is perfect because yeah. you've got hip issues from, from like uh, yeah. the. I can't uh, pedal a bike. Yeah. I, I tried. I went to a gym recently and I can't actually pedal. Yeah. Um, one leg doesn't bend enough. It was a real slap in the face. And I went, oh, okay. Because I was hoping to get on an e bike. Yeah. But not yet. I'm not going to. Because you've got two artificial hips, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm supposed to get. Is that from the horseback riding days? Yeah. I had a horse fall on me. Yeah. And so, yeah, it did damage and it catches up with age. And so, yeah, I got a knee they want to replace. But I've been trying to do it on my, you know, do other things to rather than surgery. Yeah. But, yeah. Well, you've been working out. You've lost a lot of weight. You look great. <laughs> and I'm it, almost there. Yeah. It's like, it's. You're, you're doing it and yeah. you know hats off to you and, and much yeah. respect not wasting minutes yeah another thing I'd like to talk about are we allowed to talk about this uh, uh, the, doc, the documentary oh yeah of course are we allowed to talk about this Ant Hill Darcy at Ant Hill said this I could, could be a first on the Brett TV podcast yeah 
put it out there to the world. Yeah. Um, I'm allowed to brag now. Okay. The um, I actually got to see a preview or a, a rough copy. Okay. Um, it's going to be phenomenal because it is Ant Hill. Um, they did all Steve's and they came to me saying we the have... The Stevie to- Smith documentary. Yeah. They Life had story. thousands of hours of footage that no one has ever seen. So they got it out there, UCI, Red Bull, anybody who had anything to do with Steve. I put it out there to his friends. Like I was getting pictures of drunk partying just to put it because it's from birth to after. It's wow. everything. It's a, his life, not just a racing movie. Yeah. It's going to be phenomenal. Um, the trailers will come out September 22nd. And the reason we picked that date, or Darcy did, that is the day he won the overall in 2013. It was September 22nd. Whoa, really? So we had tried picking days, but because movies take longer than you expect, we talked about, you know, his birthday and things like that as we went along and it kept changing. And then when Darcy came up with that date, I, that's phenomenal. Yeah. That's a great date. And then approximately... A month later, then um, the premieres will happen. Okay. We haven't picked anything. Um, Darcy's talked about um, Nanaimo. I also suggested Whistler is the best. That's where we did Seasons at the beginning. That's where they're going to get the real biking crowd. It's going to be different in Nanaimo. I don't think I told you. What I'm wanting to do oh. is in the spring, um, play the movie at the park as a drive-in. Oh, wow. And use one of the the wall rides yeah. as a screen. Nice. And Darcy likes that idea, too. Oh, that's cool. So that would be the spring. So when it starts getting warm and nice, when everyone could just sit on the tracks and everybody can come. Yeah. And I'm kind of going, my brother does um, barbecue pigs, like, in a big, giant thing. And so I thought, maybe we should just have him and a few food trucks and just do a whole fundraiser kind of thing and do a drive-in movie of it. And so that's where, yeah. Um, so we haven't exactly picked where it'll premiere here, but I, we'll see. I'm going to go with the drive-in movie later, though. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Well, I can't wait to see that. The Stevie Smith documentary. Oh, yeah. And then the um, then I'll go out on the iTunes, like, November, so before Christmas kind of thing. Okay. Yeah. So that's where they're at right now. So cool. Yeah. I can't wait to see that. Oh, it's... This is a new footage. Yeah. And... Yeah. When Steve passed, it was it was shortly after my daughter and I are looking at pictures going, this is all we're going to see. This is the last of the pictures. There's no more. And um, now there is. And what I never even thought of when Darcy started doing this, he goes, of course you'll get the movie yourself. Like, I will give you the movie. He goes, but I will also give you all the footage of everything he has that's been given to him too. Wow. So I'm going to have all this stuff I haven't seen. So cool. And so it's going to be a ton of tears, but yeah. that's okay. Just seeing new things. And um, from what I've seen of the movie so far, it has been done so tastefully, but I wouldn't expect anything less from Darcy. He's and Antel, they are. They kill it. Yeah. yeah. They are the best. Yeah. It doesn't get better than them. And that's why I said, if anyone's going to do this, I want you doing it, Darcy. Wow. Everybody else, if they did it, would have been a mountain bike movie. Yeah. He went. We have pictures of that first little bike of Steve. With really? Him. Yeah, a little tiny black bike. Yeah. 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 And all the way through and all those behind the scenes and stuff. Mm-hmm. Oh, I can't wait. And see. some of him doing the dumbass stuff he did. <laughs> you know, so at one point we're crying our eyes out and now we're laughing. You know, the typical things of boys do you know he's on a bike or on a skate or whatever holding on to a truck <laughs> as they're driving yeah, yeah you know this kind of thing i do wish there is no footage of it when steve got uh, uh his niece came along and he was always you know wanting to buy her stuff and things like that but he goes to toys r us <laughs> but what does he bring home a big wheel i don't know if everyone remembers what a big wheel was I, when, I, I'm, da- I'm dating myself but yeah I remember, me okay. too but he comes home and go you want to what? You won't believe what I bought. I got a big wheel, and it doesn't take long. There's some pretty gnarly hills in Nanaimo, and here Steve, as an adult, riding his big wheel down this, and his buddies in a vehicle following behind, filming it. <laughs> but I don't know. I couldn't find where it was for it to be as footage. Okay. But yeah, he did a lot of things. Like that. So 
you cry, you laugh, it has everything in it. Amazing. It has all the emotions. Yeah. And it's, yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Like, can't wait to see that. I love how it comes out on the, the date that he. Yeah. Well, we kept playing with it and, you know, it kept changing. And so I like that date when they picked that one. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, <laughs> what a, what a, people are going to love it. And, um, you know, I, I love how so many riders, you know, keep in contact with you. Yes. Yes. L like, you know, like Bulldog and Bulldog and, and, talking, and talking to G the other day. And, yeah. And, and you McKenna know, and, mechanic keeps in touch. Steve's mechanic, you know, Nigel. Nigel. I just got a message from the other day. And, you know, and that says a lot about Steve by his friends. Yeah. That keep in touch with me. You know, and it's just really cool. It's this huge community. And I love those guys. You know, I may not get to see them all the time, you know, but they are a wonderful, wonderful bunch. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, the community loves you, you know, like here in Canada, the Stevie Smith Memorial is awesome. It's a fun time. Yes. And um, <laughs> it's it's got to be emotional for you, but it's, it's you know, nice to see everybody and it's like a little yeah. reunion. Yeah. And um, people are out racing and, and, you know, there's... I'm cracking dumb jokes on the mic and <laughs> <laughs> there's people, you know, going for it and, and little kids, you know, checking out all these medals Yo, and, the, yeah. and the, and touching the trophy and, and you, you, like I say, you give away a helmet every year and a Jersey. That one will never be given away though. This one's a special one. Yeah. yeah that's for you. Yeah. And, uh, it's, it's been a real joy to, to hang out with you and, you know, over the years you and I have become friends and yeah. it's, uh, it's a real joy and I appreciate your time. Oh, no problem. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you can talk about Stevie as much as you want, you know. Never gets old. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> well, we're going to sign out, but before we do, we have a tradition here on the British TV Podcast that you have to tell a joke. Can, can you tell us a joke before we, before we go here? I suck at jokes, but I think this is back grade eight. Anyhow, what do you call a dog with no hind legs and brass balls? A dog with no hind legs and no and brass balls. I don't know. Sparky. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> okay, I, I got to have one for you. Okay. Um, did you hear about the uh, the zoo with only one exhibit of a dog? What? It was it was a Shih Tzu. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, that's that's just as bad. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> well, buddy. Thanks for having a word with us here on the Britivy Podcast. No problem. It was great. And uh, great hanging out with you at the Stevie Smith Memorial Downhill BC Cup this past weekend. And uh, I look I forward to... I am home and sleep now. I know, me too. It's been a crazy weekend. I, know, I was up all night watching the World Championships. <laughs> 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 yeah, we, yeah, we need to recover from, from the weekend yeah. of, of racing and hanging out. Much love to you and uh, much respect. And uh, Thank you. We will see you um, hopefully at the premiere of the Stevie Smith documentary oh definitely yeah. bells on okay and a box of kleenex yeah there you go <laughs> even though i know it's gonna happen yeah exactly. <laughs> kind of know the ending <laughs> that's bad oh man <laughs> you're you're so real i just love it <laughs> oh much love to you tiana thank you thank very you. much thank you say bye everybody bye everybody <laughs> <laughs> thanks tiana <laughs>